We play Bradford City at home. We were 4 2 down. He's had three blatant penalties. They were penalties, yeah. all turned down. Yeah. AK goes to me, subs, comes walking over to the touchline. I don't play. I said, Paolo. He sits on the floor, I swear, in front of the dugout, crosses his arms, and then he goes like that. I don't play no more. I'm saying, Paolo, get up. We're losing 4 2 to Bradford, Paolo. Get up, Paolo. The next thing, they're dribbling the ball around him. He's still sitting on the floor. They go through. Dean Saunders, while he's sitting on the floor, misses an open goal to make it 5 2. The crowd starts singing Paolo de Canio. Paolo de Canio. Oh, he jumps up. <laughs> Next thing he gets the ball, I swear. He was there. He beats four players. We go through, bang, bang, we score. <laughs> We're back in the game. Suddenly, two minutes later, he goes through again. So he also happens, bang. Four all. Two minutes to go, we get a penalty. <laughs> Frank Lampard picks the ball up. Oh. Paolo comes over. They're pulling the ball. <laughs> it went up a minute, didn't it? Don't win this argument. Puts the ball. Paolo puts the ball down. He runs back, runs up and smashed the ball. The goalie died full length, nearly his end on the goalpost. Incredible. Really. So I get a phone call. Aston Villa, John Gregory. They want to get rid of Paul Merson. I'd love to have Merson. What a player. The moment he walked through the door, the team took off. We won the first game of the season, beat Notts Forest, went to Crystal Palace and won. We were off and running. Merson was our leader. Captain number 10, pulling all the strings, scoring goals. Get to Christmas, we had no game. We had a free fortnight. So Merson comes walking up to me on the training ground. Harry went to, I've got a few problems. I said, no, have you? What's the matter, Merson? Well, he said, I've been drinking a lot. My missus caught me with another woman. He said, no, really, Merce? He said, I've been gambling a lot. I said, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, Merce, you know? He said, uh, do you mind if I uh, cut a Tony Adams clinic? He said, in Hertfordshire. He said, uh, maybe they can help me with my problems. And I said, no problem, Merce. You go get sorted out. Off he goes. Anyway, on the Thursday that week, I get a phone call from a friend of mine in Barbados. Rings me up, Harry, I've just seen one of your boys and having a chat with him there. One of my boys? Yeah, Paul Merson. I said, no, he can't be Michael. He's in the clinic in Hertfordshire or wherever it is. He said, yeah, and he's on the beach in Barbados with his family. He said, he looks well. I thought, I bet he does. He's in Barbados. Anyway, the following week, he comes back on the Wednesday, walks in the training ground. Now, it's mid-January, freezing cold, bit of snow about. Up comes Merce, we've all got Bob Latz on. Oh, Harry, I look at him, he has got the best suntan I've ever seen in my life. If I have a row with him and kick him out the team, I'm finished, we're never gonna get up. So I just sit there, Merce, we've got a big game Saturday, we need you, you're our main man, as long as you feel good, that's all that matters. On the Saturday, we won 2-0, I think he got both the goals, and uh, we end up going on and winning the league. I was at Tottenham at the time. I was going into one year of my contract, so obviously Tottenham had to get some money. Um, then obviously Harry called me up and said, come and play for me. And it was an unbelievable team, to be fair, Portsmouth. I remember it was the last day of the transfer window, because I'm obviously I'm at home on a, it was like a, I don't know, Sunday night. Obviously thinking Monday morning, I'll be back at Tottenham. Then all of a sudden I get his phone call. Jay's Harry, come and sign for me. They've agreed the fee, blah, 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 blah. So I'm like, okay, then get yourself down to Portsmouth. Literally got down to Portsmouth, um, didn't even do a medical. Normally medicals, normally you go to two hospitals. Like it's a full day medical. <laughs> And then you sign a contract. The next day, it's a big thing. Turned up at Fratton Park, went into the room with a physio, stretched my hamstrings. Okay, he's done. Went into the office and uh, obviously negotiating, blah, 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 blah. It's just about to sign because Ben Johnny was going to Man City. So I had to sign. It had to be done. Otherwise, Ben Johnny's coming back. I was going back to Tottenham. So Harry was sort of like panicking. It's not going to get over the line. And then my mum, last minute, my mum was like, hold on a minute. And I stopped. So I was like, oh my God, here we go. You know, and she was haggling. <laughs> I wasn't in on the day. She was in there talking to the chairman. He's, the chairman came and said, we can't get this deal done. I said, why? So I go, I said, what's the problem, Mrs. Defoe? She said, well, we want a gold bonus. I said, what do you think we're paying him 60 grand a week for? I miss him. Signed Yakubu and uh, he, was, he was playing in Israel. And he came over on trial and uh, the first day training, I think he scored about four goals in a practice match. And we, so we ended up signing him. We got promoted from the championship. I said to the Yak at the start of the season, I said, how many goals do you think you'll score this year? Oh, it's just Premier. Oh, he said, uh, 20. I said, 20 league goals? I said, you get 20 league goals. I said, I'm going to give you £20,000. Me personally, if you get 20 goals. The season goes on, he's going OK. Last game of the season, we played Middlesbrough at home. We win 5-0. Yak has scored four goals. He comes in after the goal. Hey, Yak, you were fantastic today. I said, what a performance. Great goals. Yeah, but uh, 
I should have scored the other goal. Don't worry about that. You got four goals. He said, but I, I had 19 goals. One more goal, I could have, I would have won your money. I went, oh my God, I didn't realise that. I said, I would have subbed you well before. <laughs> I said, no way would you have stayed on the pitch. I'd have had you off there straight away. He got all about the bet, and I didn't know he had 19. That put him on 19 goals. <laughs> I'd, have, I'd have subbed him straight away. No way he was going to have my 20 grand off me. This is one of the great footballers of all time, Paulo oh, yeah. Futre, Portuguese international. He comes to West Ham, we get to the first game of the season at Arsenal, and we go in the dressing room, and I take the team sheet in, come back in the dressing room, the kit man, Eddie Gillamy, Eddie said, Harry, we've got a problem. Futre, he won't wear number 16, he wants to be number 10. Suddenly, Futre comes up to me at 10 past two, first game of the season, Ivory, full house, Futre, no 16. Futre, 10. Pele, Maradona, Eusebio, 10. No effing 16. I'm sorry, Paolo, but we have squad numbers. And at the, when you came late, so we helped Moncur is number 10. We have to give you number 16. Full tree, no 16. He throws the West Ham shirt on the floor, treads on it, kicks it up the wall. So I said to him, please, Paolo, in so many words, would you please kindly put your shirt back on or leave these premises? Yeah. So he did. He left. He got his gear on and fucked off. Frank Lampard senior said to me, well done, Harry. He said, we've only got 10 men now. What are we going to do? So I'll go and see the ref. He said, well, you can't change the team without Mr Wenger's permission. So in comes Arson. Now, you know Arson was a bundle of fun, isn't he? Yeah. Well, what is this, tactics? Arson, I'm not that clever. I said, what's happened? Frank Lampard's filled the bleeding team sheet and he's put Paulo Futre's name on there. He's not even here. <laughs> so he said, oh, well, in the end, he give in, you know, and he went, yeah, OK, you know. They still beat us 3-0, I think. <laughs> no, I signed Javier Margas. He was a captain of Chile. I went to watch him play in the World Cup. He was fantastic. I watched him play at Wembley. He played against Michael Owen. He was the best player on the pitch, I thought, that day. We took him to West Ham and he came the first day. Very different in them days. We didn't have no to really take care of the foreign players. They came in and we let them, just let them get on with it, you know. We gave him a car, gave him a house to live in and showed him, someone showed all the training grounds. Next day he got up to come train. He ended up, instead of coming to Chadwell Heath, he ended up, ended up at Stansted Airport, which is about 40 miles the wrong way. Got a puncher in the country lane. I mean, what a nightmare. Started playing, played a couple of games, would have been a oh, good player. His wife hated it. She had, you know, a big family back home. She was crying and he, he, he didn't show up for training one day and uh, someone said his wife, had, uh, his wife had gone home and he was staying at the Swallow Hotel at Waltham Abbey. So we went round there to see him because he hadn't come in. We got a feeling he might be trying, he might be going home. I said, he can't, he's got a contract here. We bought him. So I get round the hotel and they said, no, he's in the room. He's, he came and got his kid. Ring him again. They rung up, no answer. Knocking on the room, back to reception. They come back, they get a key. We go in the room. He's left half his gear there. The window was open. He was on the first floor. He obviously took what he needed, his passport and everything else, jumped out the window, legged it up towards the motorway somewhere, never saw him again. Went back to Chile and that was the end of his career at West Ham.